Hi everyone, welcome to the Wine Archive. My name is Yannick Durbaka and today I'm at Beichevel. Next to me is Philippe and he invited me to have a very nice vertical tasting. So I give you the word. Thank you Yannick. Uh, thank you everyone. Thank you for uh, being with us today. And we'll be pleased to talk about Beichevel and to show you about our wines. Uh, I'm uh, Philippe Blanc, as I said, I'm the general manager of Beichevel. I've been doing that for the last 25 years, uh, started in 95. I'm a graduate agronomist and winemaker and with a team uh, led by uh, Romain Ducolon that you met uh, before. Uh, we are making, we try, we make all the efforts to make very good wine of Saint-Julien and very good wine of Bechevel. And that's what we'll invite you to discover today uh, with a good lineup of the range of the three wine we produce. One will be very short, a bit more extensive on Amiral, and then uh, five wines before having some more around the table because we make wine to drink and to pair food. So tasting is good, but drinking with food is even better. Sounds great. Okay, so if we ready to start, ready yes. to start? We'll start with what is not a third wine, what is a wine of a different vineyard, different appellation called Omedoc. Bechevel has been producing this wine for the last 40 odd years. It started in 78, 1978. And the size of the vineyard is 14 hectares, one four, 14 hectares. Uh, that's a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. And I used to say it's a real wine because there is no selection in the sense, no second wine. All we produce is here and that's the challenge to make something pleasant and, and uh, nice and uh, having a lot of uh, qualities in making only one wine. Whereas in Saint-Julien, as you will discover then, we select and being selective in a way it's a little bit, choosing is difficult, but it's a little bit easier as well compared with making that. So I serve you vintage 16. Okay. So we'll have only one, just to have an idea of what it is. Yes. Uh, 16 was a fantastic vintage of uh, wonderful weather. This one was made in the new facility. You visited the new facility. Yes. So that's, that was made in the new, new winery and new building with a new tool uh, under uh, Romain Ducolon uh, leadership. It's the first time I taste this, uh, this bottle. So for this Omedoc, five years is a good, good age for starting, especially in good vintage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of strengths. Alcohol uh, is around between 13.5 and 14. Okay. Uh, and we recommend to give this wine not for too long, maybe 10, 12 years, but okay. not necessarily more. Enjoy where the fruit is here, when the elegance is here, and don't let them age for too long. Very elegant in the nose, huh? A lot of fruit. Fruit, a uh, nice tone of uh, toast, light. Yes. Mm -hmm. We use, so this one is aged in uh, barrels for a year, 12 months in barrels, okay. with about 30% new oak, and the rest is one year or two years old. So the idea and the goal is not to be too rich in terms of oakiness. We must leave the fruit express and not point out and stress with oak. Okay. So very often now the maturity, especially in a vintage like 16, is very accomplished, very high. So there's a lot of fruitiness. And as there is a lot of mellow in that, we focus on the roundness, and the maturity and the approachability. Very juicy, yeah? Lovely acidity. It's fresh and balanced. Mm -hmm. But it's round, it's a mouthful, but it's easy, approachable. Tannins is nice, tannins is round, you know, elegant in the sense, it's not big tannins, it's not extra dense tannins, but it's voluptuous yes. and nice. And the, the, the finish is also very elegant. It's very, and also a long finish. So we'll jump 
to a vineyard which is on the other side of the road. And being on the other side of the road, we changed appellation and we are in Saint Julien as this vineyard, in, which is located next to this one, used to be there before 1855. So they were vineyard, they were, Bechevel was picking grapes in Cusack before 1855. And in, in, uh, thus, they decided when Appalachian system started in 1936 to secure these vines in the Appalachian, although it was outside. And there is one uh, restriction. If, if it's separated from Bechevel, it loses the right to be Saint-Julien. So that's neighboring vineyard. So in the sense, it's terroir-wise, it's quite, quite close. But on the other end, different blend and different type of making. So we'll start with same vintage. So you will uh, be able to compare, Yannick, with 16 again, Amiral. Five years, good age for starting Amiral. So you will feel, compared with Brulière, there is more density, there is a little bit more tension, there is far more Cabernet in that, mm -hmm. Cabernet, Merlot, and a little bit of Cabernet Franc. Okay. Aging is again 12 months in barrels, a fraction more new barrels, but very slight difference, 35% new barrels, so it's not a big deal. But you've, you will see you've got something a little bit denser, a little bit stricter. So more, more, more than flavors, which are different, which are probably a little bit more floral, for example, as well, where it was maybe more fruity here and a bit more floral here. It's the density of tannins. Tannins is, is more present, a little bit stricter, a bit denser. You've got this density, tightness of the, the tannins, which project the wine longer in, in the future of the wine. That's why really five years for Amiral is just the entering door of consumption, mm -hmm. and it will last for the next 10 other years to 15 years with no problem. So one thing which is important, what is the difference between what we call Grand Vin and second wine, Second wine is a selection. Mm -hmm. uh, basically today, it comes from a single vineyard for 90% of it. So that, that has its own quality, its own ident identity. But it has been a big change, big change, sorry, a big change in the last 20 or 30 years. Whereas second wine, which are something which is not that old, uh, oldest property maybe started 50 or 60 or 70 years before, mm -hmm. but maybe 10 or 15 years ago, some very famous properties had no second wine. Mm -hmm. uh, they were selecting, but they were discarding the one they didn't want the Grand Vin in other wines or other names. But and now everybody has got second wine and sometimes third wine and sometimes even fourth wine. Mm -hmm. We've got only two. But Take the idea that 82, for example, you, you, you heard and you, your followers heard about the, the greatness of uh, 82 vintage. Yes. It was 4% of second wine and 96% of Grand Vin. Okay. Today, we are about 40% of second wine and 55% only of Grand Vin. Wow. That means we reduced, which implies, of course, the quality of Grand Vin increases but quality of second wine increases as well, because wine which were here before are here now, and they were considered to be good to very good, but they're here, so it lifts the level and the quality of the second wine as well. Again, um, 16, great vintage, and you've got the sweetness uh, a lot of uh, uh, something which is very ripe, very, very, very easy going, the palate, and it's, it's gentle and nice. I love it. So we jump to 17 vintage. Mm -hmm. A more challenging vintage? 
So I, I like to defend mm -hmm. 17 because many people have got a, a wrong view yes. on what 17 is. 17 in terms of vintage was a vintage uh, very early. Very early means very warm start of the season. Growth was early. And then, unfortunately, with a little bit like today, beautiful weather, blue sky, but no thoroughly winds. Temperature drops in the morning, uh, around 4 o'clock in the morning. And it was in April, April 27th. And at this April 27th, 17, temperature dropped at maybe minus 3 in many, many places. And it destroyed the crop because the shoots were about that long at that time and the damage was huge. Some people in Bordeaux lost 80-85% of the crop. Our property next to Les Brulières, which is a cru bourgeois called Chateau Beaumont, mm -hmm. we lost 50%. Here we lost maybe 30%. Here we lost a good 30%. But what's fun, not funny, but what's interesting to understand, here we didn't lose anything, zero loss. Wow. So, Challenging year. Yeah, for some people it was a, a drama. It was a terrible year because they lost in, in three or four hours. The crop was gone and you don't retrieve it. So it was terrible. It uh, damaged the image of the vintage because you said it. Uh, and said, oh, challenging year. No, no, no challenging year. Perfect year. And then it was an easy going year. The year was easy. The, 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 the summer was good mm -hmm. and the crop w was very good. So we had a very good crop. And I'm very, very confident and very easy and happy with the quality of 17, especially Bechevin. But the image is, you said it as an introduction, challenging because people think it's difficult. It can be, but it can be not. And it's not the case for Grandma, and it's not much the case. And we had a very good crop overall at Bechevin. Okay, because uh, I actually love what you said. Because 2017, the only way I, I ask the question, it's a challenging year, because you read it everywhere. So the critic says it, the, the journalists say it, but I'm here for a couple of days in Bordeaux and I've, I've been tasting 2017. They're splendid. So I don't know why everybody says it's challenging, but you read all about it. People pretend to know and want to say something to show they know, even when they don't know. Uh, and very often they've got wrong views and that's the wrong views and that's difficult for 17 to cope with it mm -hmm. because it sticks to it yes. and it makes it difficult whereas the wine are absolutely not on a challenging situation. It's just lovely. So very nice fruit here again. Very nice. So what's important to observe with the vertical tasting like that is the level of maturity we reach today mm -hmm is extremely high, if not perfect, extremely high. Yes. So you always get you know, the fruitiness uh, and absolutely no character of underripeness that unfortunately existed in some vintages in the 90s or 80s or before. Oh, such nice tannins. So 17 is, uh, the characteristic is it's very elegant. It's, it's not you will, you will compare and you will keep the glasses so you will be able to come back on it. You will compare with 18. You will see 18 is heavy weight, mm -hmm. like a boxer, heavy, heavy weight, where it's a middle weight or a feather weight, you know, something. But it's very elegant, very fine tannins, very approachable. And I think many tasters, many consumers can enjoy 17 Amiral from now, yeah, very quickly. because it's, you know, it's fine, it's fruity, it really leaves a very nice aftertaste. It's, very it's long and, and fruity mm -hmm. and pleasant. Yeah, it's very approachable, really, yes. So I'll pour 18 now. 18, okay. So 18 is the last bottled wine to date. To date. This We'll start tomorrow, the, in the coming days, we'll start bottling 19. Ah, yes, but today, 18 is the youngest wine you can get in bottle. Uh, a word on if you employ the word challenging, 18 was challenging. 18 was an incredibly challenging start of the season with something warm and, and wet. 
What is the uh, implication of warm and wet in Bordeaux? It, it means what we call disease pressure. That means the, the vine is prone to be, let's say, attacked by what we call mildew, mm -hmm. downy mildew especially. And 18 was a disaster. The pressure was huge. So then you've got two categories of, of, of estates, of properties, of chateaus. Some people who are practicing what we call organic or biodynamic, and they suffered hell, and they lost, I don't know, they have to tell, but we can consider maybe 80% or 90% of the crop. We have here, we, are, we were practicing in 18, we are practicing the type of organic viticulture, and we lost a lot as well. But 18 is very compatible to another great vintage called 09, where the beginning of the season was very difficult and challenging, and then the weather was perfectly fine at the beginning of July. And that was the case with 18, like it was in 09. And then the weather went absolutely incredibly perfect, warm and dry, maturation and all that. And it was, you know, I, I call that hayway to heaven, uh, you know, straight and very easy making as well, because you reach and never ever we reach the uh, so perfect maturity in, in our history. So color is probably even a little bit fraction darker than the previous ones. Uh, in, t in taste, there is, I think, a, a difference with 17. 17 was light, lighter fruit. It was fruity, very, very elegant and, and, and obvious to, 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 to smell. Here it's a little bit denser. It's a little bit more hidden tighter. Yeah. But it's very uh, pleasant. Yeah, it's very pleasant, pleasant flavors. It's, it's, it's sweet. It's round. Yes. It's a little bit think, floral. Oh, it's dense. It's dense and ripe. Mm -hmm. And then boom, you've got a big quality of wine. It's very explosion in the it's mouth. Big explosion. It's heavier. Heavier can be wrong in the term of can be negative, but it's it's full. It's yes. It takes a lot of place. It's, it's very complex. Well. Compared with the previous one, which was elegant, fine. Uh, oh, I need to drink that. This one is, wow, maybe we should wait a little bit. So much potential, wow. And do you know the percentage of the, the so, great blend? So in, in Amiral, mm -hmm. 65 Cabernet and 35 Merlot. Okay. And sometimes a little bit less and a fraction of Cabernet Franc. But it's dominant. Cabernet Sauvignon, and basically two-thirds, one-third. Okay. Yeah, now if you can compare them, all the three, it's... Oh. I really love the 17. It's, it's so crazy with all the, all the... It doesn't deserve a bad reputation. Yeah, indeed. It's really annoying. It's annoying. Oh, I think it's important to taste yeah. and to observe that, wow. Uh, I'm wrong, it's good. You know, that's what we call sometimes underdogs or underrated vintages, you know. Yes. There are vintages that people consider to be not as good, or their reputation is, is harsh, and they don't deserve it, uh, in some places anyway, at, at least. I, I, don't, I don't talk for all the 17s. Maybe there are some bad ones, I have no idea. I'm talking about ours. And again, it was not changing, it's, it's nice and elegant. But it's a fraction less powerful than, uh, if I rank it, I would rank, in terms of power, 18, 16, 17. Okay. But if, if, if you want to drink one of those three tomorrow, 17. Huh? Probably I would yeah. take 17. That's very important to know. So if you want to taste one of these wines and you're curious about the wine, if you find the 17, pick a 17.